Okay, hope you didn't get a heart attack there. No idea what that time lapse ends up looking like in the end, since I had to speed it up over 200%. Pretty sure you couldn't discern anything at that speed. But, either way, all the three issues I pointed out are now fixed and replaced by three more problems. Always great news, so let's go over what I changed. First of all, the gear reduction in the Z-axis. Looking down here, it is now completely gone, as you can see, replaced by a much cleaner setup with the stepper motor mounted directly to these two cross members, and even the inappropriate looking part that reminds us all too much of my supposed doppelganger called Jordy. Even this part is now completely gone to be replaced by a solution which is not only slightly better, but also twice as complex. Well, to be honest, I am really not too happy with this solution down here. It's really just botched in, but I couldn't come up with anything better than either the inappropriate looking part, which didn't even work that well, or what I did here. So as you can see, if I remove these two parts, as you can see here, we have two hardwood blocks with a roller on one side, and these are spring-loaded inside this metal shell to press against the pulley of the motor. Now, <clears throat> spring-loading hardwood pieces is technically way too complex, way too many moving parts. The more moving parts you have, the less well it works, basically. I really don't like it, but like I said, I couldn't come up with anything better since I'm also running out of space here underneath the pincher. I only have like 5 millimeters between these cross members and the tabletop, so I really haven't that many options of putting stuff there and these blocks with rollers. These basically kind of work like carbon brushes on a standard universal motor, like these carbon brush thingies. It's a complicated approach. I hope it's going to work, but for the stepper motor it's actually a lot better now because the stepper motor actually allows to tension the belt. As you can see, it is just mounted on a small spacer because it was just a little bit too high, so putting a little extra piece of plywood is perfect. But as you can see now here we have two elongated slots, they are not really elongated in the CAD here, but in reality they are going to be elongated so the step motor can slide left and right, and if I slide it into the rollers, the rollers are going to go further apart, and the belt is going to be tensioned. With the inappropriate looking part, it wasn't that good because I couldn't tension, I couldn't really tension the belt, I don't know what I thought I'm going to do, but if the belt was too slack, I didn't really have an option of tensioning it, except putting something else, some other tensioning thing over here. But what you might notice about these pulleys is the weird color. Now that I have the pulley on the motor, I am definitely going to have to find out what pitch this timing belt is, put a little bit of effort into the project like that to get the appropriate size pulley, but I'm not going to buy a pulley just like that. The pulley is actually that, hence the color, the pulley is 3D printed. I don't have a 3D printer <laughs> yet. So the idea was to build a wooden replica of the pulley build it into the printer so I can get the printer to work and print out its own pulleys. That is what these pulleys are going to be as well. These are also going to be 3D printed, I just hadn't adjusted the color yet. Talking about having to figure out the pitch of the belt, I would have had to do that regardless for the two pulleys driving the Z-axis lead screws, so it really doesn't matter if I have to do another one. So I'm just gonna cut these out of plywood either just on the bandsaw and sanding a little bit, just to get it approximately working as a pulley, and then in the end I'm going to print a proper one. But it really doesn't matter if I have to do another one of these. So this is, well, yeah, it's not a great solution with these spring-loaded roller thingies, but it's gonna have to do. I don't like complex solutions, but here, really, I have no idea what else I could do with this. I have no clue.
About the y-axis, the print bit, I am now a little bit happier about that since I did a lot of changes there as well. You can see I rotated the stepper motor assembly by 90 degrees and added an entire new MDF part in the middle here like that. Now unfortunately this also adds weight, which I am not very happy with, but it improves things by putting the stepper motor further down so I was able to make these two bars here thinner, also 10 millimeters, just like these, because the print bait came further down after I changed these little metal brackets on the corners. Now these little brackets, these are now a lot bigger. Actually, it's really hard to estimate the exact size things are in CAD, so the metal brackets I had on there earlier were actually Tiny! They were really small! And also the threaded rod was only 3 millimeters in diameter. It was tiny! Way too small! To get the screw further towards the middle of the print bed, instead of making this bracket a triangle shape like it was before, I actually made it square down here so the screw could go further in. Now it's obviously wasting a little bit more of my printing real estate with these things bigger, but I mean, the other ones were only like that big. Huge, but now I'm a lot happier with the Y carriage, except adding that weight. Now for the X axis, I said I'm going to put the fishing line inside the X axis. Since I wasn't really sure if my new solution was going to be any better than what I already had, I did an entire break out of the X axis. So this time I pretty much redesigned the entire, <laughs> the entire X carriage with the hot end on it. I redesigned everything. Probably a total waste of time, but let me just show you what I did here. It is now designed around the full metal part that was actually part of the carriage on the typewriter as well. So I figured rather than cutting off all this crap around here, all these protrusions, rather than cutting these off, maybe I could just use them as they are and design my carriage around these protrusions to work with them, to make this metal part a structural component of the carriage. So I wasted a ton of time redesigning the entire metal part in CAD and I designed these two parts on the side to go around it and they're gonna screw into this metal part here into the hole and I'm going to drill and tap a couple of holes down here as well and there is going to be a slot which this slides into. I didn't put the slot in the CAD but then there is this kind of frame going around the entire metal part with my roller bearings down below and up top. Now not exactly happy with that design either. Definitely not happy since as you can see Ah, there is really not that much surface area to attach my springy blocks to the side pieces. I only have like 10 by 15 millimeters, which I'm definitely not happy with, because if I glue it on, I don't have any possibility of adjusting it up and down, which I kind of need to make it run smoothly on the x-axis. But if I screw it on, I just get a lot of problems with these roller bearings since they are offset from the pivot point, say there's a screw here going into the springy block lengthwise, even if I put two screws here, it's still going to act like a pivot, since screws don't really fasten things all that well, so theoretically I would have to glue it, but I'm not happy with that either, because then I don't have any adjustment possibilities. Down here I had intended to glue it anyways since I don't need any adjustment down here. It's just the springy block up here which needs to be adjusted for the actual size of the x-axis. Well, that is not a good solution as you can see. Here in the front we have another weirdly shaped block which takes the hot end and I'm gonna have to drill a bigger hole into the metal down here to accommodate the hot end. But as you can see, it's not a perfect solution and also another big problem with that design. I couldn't figure out a way of tensioning the fishing line because now with the carriage 
being much wider than it originally was. If I move it all the way to the right, now you can see the ball bearings are pretty much at the end of the rail, but as you can see, the side of the carriage actually protrudes here. And that's a big problem because I kind of need a little bit of a tensioning mechanism for the fishing line. And also the fishing line isn't really inside the x-axis after all, it's just flush. But if I make this part here, this end piece, protrude, my carriage is going to bump into it. And yeah, it's creating a few problems. But that being said, my original solution wasn't really that much better anyway, since the x carriage itself isn't all that much simpler either. Because now if we take a look, I didn't show you that earlier, but here in the back I actually did have to do a little cutout for the gears. As you can see here, there is an, a huge hole in the middle of this part because of the stupid gears, just so that I can get the metal part flush with the other side. And that's not a good solution either. Except up here, the good part about it is that I have the springy block up here flush against the MDF. So then I can put in screws and little adjustable elongated slots to adjust it up and down, just like I did on my pen plotter. That was the idea, but as you can see with the huge hole in the middle, it's not that good either. Problem is, I just can't decide which of these solutions I'm gonna use. They're both bad, basically. I would love to do a crossover between the two, just use the carriage design on the new one and put it on the rail of the old one, but like I said, it's not going to work because it's gonna bump into the end stop here. So I think I'm gonna have to redesign the new one so it actually works a little bit better. Maybe if I just put another piece of wood up here, so I have something against which I can screw the springy block, maybe then it's gonna be good enough. Still don't know what I'm gonna do with the tensioning mechanism for the fishing line, but I guess I'll just have to figure that out eventually. But that is about it, I think. Well, the solutions aren't good, they are good enough for now. I'm just gonna give that some more thought and figure it out eventually. I think we can go ahead and start building the gantry in the next episode, regardless of what kind of design for the X carriage I'm gonna use. I kinda hope you enjoyed, I hope it didn't end up way too long again. That was what I wanted to say about the printer before we actually start building it. Now, just before I leave, I wanted to mention one other thing. Since many of you probably don't know, I actually have a second channel where I currently, that means this week, uploaded almost daily shorts. So if you want to watch everything I upload, definitely go check out the second channel where I will eventually also upload the occasional pet project, which I can't upload to my main channel due to algorithm reasons. So yeah, head over there, check it out if you like that, and I will hopefully see you soon. Bye!